So we're going to look at one more of these examples here. This one is a series from n equals 2 to infinity. So we've got x to the n over n times the natural log of n squared. I'm not going to use the root test here because not everything is raised to the nth power, but I will use the ratio test where we're going to look at the n plus first term and compare that against the nth term. It's normally set up as a fraction, but because this one is a little more complicated, I'm going to write it um, as being multiplied by the reciprocal instead of just divided by a fraction. So the n plus first term is x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 times the natural log of n plus 1 quantity squared. And then it would be divided by the nth term. Again, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So we have n times the natural log of n squared over x to the n. Now what I'm going to do here is kind of separate things out a little bit just to make it a little easier to find our limits. x to the n plus 1 divided by x to the n just leaves us with an x. Then I have n over n plus 1. And what I'm going to do with the two natural logs is I'm going to look at the natural log of n over the natural log of n plus 1 times itself. Just trying to keep things as simple as possible here. So, finding the limit. As n goes to infinity, for the first fraction here, you could divide everything through by n, and you'd end up with um, 1 over 1 plus 1 over n, so you'd have a limit of 1. But for these two, you would have to use L'Hopital's rule, which is taking the derivative of the numerator and denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. And I'll go ahead and write out what we could do here. So just dividing through by n, we would have this. L'Hopital's rule is going to give me 1 over n over 1 over n plus 1, which you could rewrite, and that's what I'll do here for this last one, is n plus 1 over n. Now, in a very similar manner to what I did here, you could do that with both of these second two terms, because remember, this last one is just a way to rewrite this third one here. <clears throat> I could divide through by n, and in all three of these cases, the limit as n goes to infinity is going to be 1. So we have x times 1 times 1 times 1. So the limit here is simply the absolute value of x. Now, for the ratio test to show absolute convergence, this has to be less than 1. So that gives us our radius of convergence. It's just 1. Now, knowing that the absolute value of x has to be less than 1, we know that we have an open interval from negative 1 to positive 1, for which um, all x values inside that open interval is going to cause the series to converge absolutely. But now we need to check the two endpoints. So I'm going to start with x equals negative 1. At x equals negative 1, we have the series from n equals 2 to infinity of negative 1 to the nth power over n times the natural log of n squared. Now, I'm not going to 
go through the whole process, but this um, is an alternating series. So this is what we talked about in section 10.6, and this does converge by the alternating series test. Um, the u sub n values would be 1 over n times the natural log of n squared. They're all going to be positive. The series is non-increasing, and as n approaches infinity, the limit of 1 over n times the natural log of n squared is going to go to 0. So it, it meets all the criteria, so we know that this converges by the alternating series test. So this one works. Let's now look at x equals positive 1. So plugging in, we'd have positive 1 to the nth power. Well, 1 to the nth power is just a 1. So we're now looking at 1 over n times the natural log of n squared. And this one actually converges by the integral test. If you were to, and I'm not going to go through every single step, but if I were to look at um, the integral, so if we looked at the limit as b approaches infinity of 2 to b, we'd have 1 over x times the natural log of x squared dx. If we let u equal the natural log of x, then du is 1 over x dx. So this would become the limit as b approaches infinity of the natural log of 2 to b. And we'd have u to the negative second, because it would be 1 over u squared times du. And we can easily integrate that. It's going to work. So the series is also going to converge at x equals 1. So here, this is uh, unique from some of the other ones, the series converges absolutely on the closed interval because it converges at both endpoints. It converges absolutely on the closed interval from um, negative 1 up to positive 1. So let's get that written, and there we go. So this section really is going to, even in some ways more than the last one, is going to bring everything that we've learned together as you're checking for the radius of convergence, and then you're checking the endpoint. So you're really having to pull from all these different tests. I'm going to stop this one here, and we're going to look at a couple more theorems uh, continuing in this section in the next video.